Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. You can do better than that. Come on and bless the Lord with me. From the comfort of your home. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord as if it's your last time. Bless the Lord, the creator, the one and only, true and living God. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing the key church to come into your home and offer a convenient worship service. Yes, God. God is omnipresent. So even if you're not in this building, he is in your home if you welcome him in. Yes. So come on, give him glory today. Give him glory today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We come to bless your name, God. We come to bless your name in this house. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Glory. From the Thank comfort you, of your Jesus. home, I ask you to bow your head and close your eyes and lift your heart to God. Father, we come boldly to the throne of grace today. We come as humble as we know how. We come seeking your face, seeking your hand, seeking your presence today. We come to lift your name on high, for truly you are worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor. No one deserves the glory but you. And we thank you. We thank you that you've been so merciful. We thank you that you've been so patient. We thank you that you've been so kind. You've been so forgiving. We thank you that you're still providing for us. You're still healing. You are still God. You still sit high and look low. You are still in control. And we give your name glory and honor. Lord, we come today looking for your word to manifest in our lives. We come today seeking you for miracles, signs, and wonders in our own lives today. Oh God, I ask you to heal all manner of sickness and disease. We thank you, Lord. Your word promises that no sickness or disease shall come nigh our dwelling. By your stripes, we're already healed. We thank you for how you're protecting the key church. We thank you for you created us for this season, for such a time as this. We thank you for our shepherd. We we are proud to be under the shepherd of Pastor Damon Holiday. We thank you for who he is in you. We thank you for the vision and the visionary. We ask you to bless him abundantly more than he can ask or think. Oh God, a fresh anointing on him right now. Let him deliver your word with a Holy Ghost boldness like he never has before. Bless his family. Bless First Lady Antoinette. Bless the girls, Ebony and Destiny. Bless our first family. And Lord, we ask you to bless everyone, not only key members, but every visitor, everyone who took the time out to see what's happening at the key right now. We don't want them to see this beautiful edifice that you have given us, but we want them to see you. We want someone to come running and asking, what must I do to be saved? Have your way in this service. Let your anointing fall on this worship team right now. Move by your spirit. We dedicate everything to you. We release our will for your will, Lord. Have your way in us and through us. And as always, we're going to give your name glory and honor. We thank you for it all and we ask it. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, let's continue to give God praise today. Hallelujah. Come on, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to lift up the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Come on, he is worthy to be praised. Anybody grateful oh, tonight? Yeah. Anybody know that all things are working together yes. for your good? Come on and testify on tonight. God is able. Yes, he is. Watch him work it out. Come on. Hey. Come on, put those hands together if you believe. Right here, right here.
Church. I'm Pastor Holiday, and this is our convenient Sunday morning worship experience where you get an opportunity to worship the Lord from the comfort and the safety of your own home. Well, next Sunday is a milestone for the Key Church. Uh, as most of you know, God has blessed us to complete our brand new state of the art facility, and next Sunday will be the first Sunday we get an opportunity to worship on campus. Come on, y'all, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Uh, to accommodate for everybody, uh, we will have two services. And so we'll, have, we'll go back to our usual format, and we'll have a 9 o'clock a.m. and an 11 o'clock a.m. service. So we ask that you will put the word out. Let everybody know uh, the Key Church is open for business. We're excited. Everybody is going back. Schools are going back. The NBA is going back. Everybody is going back. And so we want to come back into the house of the Lord and worship his name together. And we're excited about that. Invite your family and friends as well to come on out to the Key Church and to be blessed. Uh, we will do our best to keep you safe uh, with space, sanitizer, and mask. So we'll have social distance. Uh, we'll keep everybody six feet apart and all of that. Uh, everybody's required to wear a mask. And for this first Sunday, we will provide all of our members and our visitors with some custom Key Church masks. And uh, we're excited about that. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we are concerned about your physical health. So we'll do our due diligence to make sure that we take all of the protocol that's necessary to keep you safe. Uh, but we're also concerned about your mental health your emotional health, and most importantly, your spiritual health. And that's why we pray to the Lord and we've decided to open up the church because us coming together and worshiping God together is so vital for our spiritual well-being. And so we're going to come into the house of the Lord. We're going to trust him. And we need to pray that God will keep us safe as we glorify him and we get people saved. That is our goal. Amen. If you are not comfortable uh, with coming back to church and worshiping on campus, then we will continue to have our online services just for you. But there will be a time change. There will be a time change. Uh, we will no longer have pre-recording. All of our recording will be live. And so we'll be recording live from a 9 o'clock a.m. service. And so what, the, that, what that means for you is that uh, next Sunday, uh, we will be recording online 9 o'clock a.m. Central Time. And then we'll be recording online uh, 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And so make sure that you get the word out. Uh, make sure that you make that change in your mind and on your calendar that the chime will change uh, if you will be viewing us online next week. Now, next month is Super September, and we're excited about it. God is doing a great thing here at the church. And uh, one of the great things that he's doing, he's bringing one of America's greatest preachers and pastors, and we're excited about that. So the great uh, Dwight McKissick from the Cornerstone Church in Arlington uh, will be coming on the 13th uh, to preach for a pastor's anniversary. I thank God for him because when God called my father, the late Dr. E.K. Bailey, home to be with him, uh, 
Pastor Dwight McKistick stepped in and he became my new father in the ministry. He has been such a blessing to me and to our church. As a matter of fact, uh, Pastor McKissick and the Cornerstone Church in Arlington, they planted us. We're a church plant. We're only eight years old, but they planted us. And so we're so excited. And how fitting is it for him to come uh, in our first month of on-campus worship and to preach to us from the Word of God for the pastor's anniversary. And so we're excited about that. And then the following Sunday on the 20th, uh, get your white. Wear your white and so you can go shopping, get your outfits together because we're going to wear white to celebrate uh, what God has done here at the Key. We'll be celebrating 20 years, I mean, excuse me, eight years as a church on the 20th. Come on, y'all, let's give God a hand, clap of praise. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that. We're going to turn up because God has been so good to us. We're going to get our shadow. We're going to run around the church. We're going to give him all of the praise because he deserves it all. Come on, y'all. You can praise him right there from the comfort and the safety of your own home. And so guess what? With all that exciting stuff going on first Sunday, uh, first opportunity to worship uh, on the 6th and then uh, Pastor McKissick coming on the 13th, church anniversary on the 20th, but that's not the only exciting things happening in September. What also makes it a super September is that next month, Sister Holiday and I will be celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary. Come on somebody, what a milestone. Hallelujah, what an awesome month. We're looking forward to that, and so we just give God praise. I give God praise for her. What a blessing he has sent into my life when he sent Sister Holiday into my life. All right, if you want to support the Key Church and all the miracles that God is performing here, the way that you can do that is to download an app called Givelify, and then you can look for the Key Church. You'll see my picture, and then you can put your debit card information into that secure account. Once it's set, you never have to set it again, and giving becomes very, very convenient from your phone. You can give in about three minutes with three clicks of your phone, and uh, you can give any time of the day or any day of the week. And we're thankful for Giveify. It has been a Giveify has been a blessing to us. If you're not comfortable with giving online, you can mail your offering in to the Key Church, P.O. Box 50793, Fort Worth, Texas. 76105 and thank you for your generosity and your support of our church and we are just so grateful to God get ready to celebrate eight years of existence God has brought us a mighty long way come on y'all let's give God a hand clap of praise as we continue to worship him God bless you. come on let's worship the Lord come on I don't know what you're in need of today but he's always on time come on he never breaks a promise but he does break chains. Come on. He never breaks a promise, but he does break chains. Anybody glad that he's a chain breaker tonight? There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. 
Everybody just sing it. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, help me sing. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Whatever you need the Lord to do, there's nothing too big. Whatever you may be going through, give it to Jesus. Whatever you may be going through, give it to Jesus. much going on in our world think about it some people have to deal with three things at one time we have social injustice happening in our world and we have a pandemic COVID-19 and then natural disasters happening all at the same time but in spite of all of that we serve a God that is good and he is still in the blessing business Let's give God a hand, clap of praise. What an awesome, awesome God that we serve. Amen, amen. All right, I think we just got word this week that one of our favorite actors died from cancer. And so um, we're just putting our faith and our trust in God. So much going on, but God is worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of your trust and dependency. And so I would recommend today um, that if you're having a challenging time, just put your faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He'll make all the difference in your life. Today, uh, we're going to look at Micah chapter 6, and we'll deal with verses 8 through 16. But for your initial reading, uh, we'll look at chapter 6 and verse 8. Here at the key, we stand for the reading of God's holy word. And so we'll ask that you'll stand in reverence to the word of God because it is a living word. Somebody said that you can 
love a thing, but you can only fall in love with a person. And so that's why you can actually fall in love with the word of God because it is a living word. Amen. Micah chapter 6, and we're going to read verse 8. If you found it, say amen. All right. If you have a hard time finding it, go to Matthew and go back left about six books. Say amen. You'll run into Micah. Hallelujah. All right. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? One, to act justly. Two, to love mercy. And three, to walk humbly with your God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And for a little while, God put on my heart to share with you from this idea, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace is a political statement originated in 1986 following the death of Michael Griffith at the hands of a young white mob. The idea, though, did not originate in 1986, but it originated when God sent Micah to share the same message with Israel in response, come on somebody, to their disobedience to him. In response to the death of George Floyd, Jacob Blake, along with countless others, God has sent me here this morning to share his message, no justice, no peace, with America. God, in the book of Micah, verse 8, which we just read, God started his court-like indictment of Israel by reminding them first how good he had been to them. And then he flipped the script and asked them why, in response to his goodness to them, had they treated him so bad. As a reminder of his goodness, God mentioned Moses. You know Moses, who he used to bring them out of Egypt, providing both deliverance and redemption. He also mentioned Aaron, who God sent to Israel as a blessing to be the one that would pray for them and ask God to forgive them. Come on, somebody. Now God was sending Micah, like Moses, to go to the people on his behalf. But not only would he send Micah like Moses, he would also use Micah like Aaron to come to him on the people's behalf. And so I want to encourage all of my pastor friends, like Micah, we have the responsibility to play both the role of the prosecuting and the defense attorney in God's court-like indictment against America. Micah had to tell the people what God said and then go to God on behalf of the people asking for forgiveness. God has placed it on me this morning to take the responsibility to come to my people, to black people, to say to black people, especially since I have the privilege of pastoring a predominantly African-American church, God has put it on my heart to come to my people and say, it's time for us to get saved. It's time for us to surrender our life to Jesus Christ. It's time for us to stop sinning. It's time for us to stop committing crimes. It's time for us to get our lives together. God has put it on my heart to come to my people, my people, 
uh, to our entertainers and to our leaders to say it's time for us to provide opportunities for our young black people. These are our babies. These are our children. It's time for us to provide opportunities, training, and provide skill sets so that they can be self-sufficient because it's time for us to change. Listen, as a people, come on somebody, as a people, historically, we're believers in Jesus Christ. It's time to us to come back home and it's time to us to surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. Now, watch this, watch this. As a safety measure, as a safety measure, God has given me a responsibility to say to my people, listen, listen, let's stop resisting and let's stop running from the police. Just as a safety measure. It doesn't matter whether you're right or wrong. I'm giving you this instruction as somebody who loves you to give you the best opportunity possible to stay alive. Because whether you were right or wrong, we can march for you, we can protest for you, but we want you to live. We want you to live. We can, we can fix other things later, but if you lose your life, we can't fix that. And so I'm just saying to you, don't resist, don't run. It doesn't matter whether you're in the right or wrong. We just ask that you will just comply with the police. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to say to white America, stop hating, stop killing, and stop treating us unfairly because it's not godly. It's just not godly. And many of you proclaim to be godly, but that's not the way that godly people act. Finally, like my big brother Micah, I want to take the responsibility to go to God on behalf of all of America and say, please forgive us and help us all because we all need you. We're in a season where we have so much challenge and there, I'm telling you right now, there is no human solution. This is not a human solution. And you can continue to try all the human efforts, but it's not going to fix anything. The answer is Jesus Christ. Now, uh, with his leadership and with his direction and with his empowerment, God can unite us to come together, even as an African-American people, and do some things that, that will fix the system. But I guarantee you, we cannot do it in our own power. God said, lean not to your own understanding, but in all things, and I think this falls into all things, in all things, acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, I already read for you verse 8. Matter of fact, let me just read it again. Uh, Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. He has shown you, O mortal, I think that includes all of us, what is good. Even if you don't know it, God has been good to you. And what does the Lord require of you to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? The first point that God put on my heart to share with you uh, this morning is the Lord's requirements. The Lord's requirements. In his court-like indictment of Israel, God started out by expressing to them and reminding them how good he has been to them. Even if you don't know it, even if you're not a believer in God, I'm here to tell you that God has been good to you. Amen. If you just took a breath and it worked, it's because God said, okay, God has been good to you. God made you. God loves you. God has been a blessing to you. And, and God is expecting some things in response to his goodness to you. Now, in, his, in response to the Lord's goodness to Israel, and watch this, and not only Israel then, but the United States now, who is a self-proclaimed Christian nation. God says in response to his goodness, he has some expectations for us. And so you may say, Pastor Howdy, what is the expectation? God expects us in response to his goodness to be good like him. That's what he wants us. We're, we're his children. Uh, we're his representatives. He wants us in response to his goodness to us 
to be good like him. All right, so now there's three aspects, three things that he expects us to do to express godly goodness. The three things that his people need to do to express godly goodness and to remain in his grace is one, to act justly, two, to love mercy, and three, to walk humbly with God. So let's deal with the first requirement of God. The first thing he says, he requires us as believers to act justly. Now, what does it mean to act justly? All that really simply means is to act fair in dealing with others and to be relevant to our message on today, to, be, to act fair in your dealing with other races. That's what it means to act justly. And we all must admit that we have failed this expectation as a nation. Things are not fair in how the law is written. It's not fair in how it's executed because we know that we see blacks get more time for the same crime. So we know that the law has not been written fairly and then or justly. And we know that it has not been executed fairly because for the same crime, it seems like as African-Americans, we get more time. And finally, the law has not been enforced justly because it seems like we're the only ones that die while being arrested. Come on, somebody. We, we've seen some white Americas, Americans, commit heinous crimes and then be arrested with dignity and respect. But then we see Americans like George Floyd pass a fake $20 bill, which is not even an arrestable crime, and he's killed. Come on, somebody. Now, listen. How do you know, I, 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 I wasn't planning on stop right there, but how do you even know when you have a fake 20? I don't know what a fake 20 looks like, and if that's the case, then I should have been killed because as a church over the years, you know how many fake bills have come through this church? There is no way, and, and, but the only thing that happens to us is we just lose the $20, but that should have been the only thing that happened in that case. It wasn't even a, a, a crime that he should have been arrested for, and yet he lost his life. unfair and unjust come on somebody Jacob Blake was breaking up a fight come on and the Bible says bless are the peacemakers see you know you can't be a peacemaker until you have a fight And so he was killed for being a blessing. Come on, somebody. And shot in the back seven times like, really? Time out. When it comes to police enforcement, there seems to be no justice, but just us that are dying. The second requirement that God had for believers in response to his goodness, he expected us, expects all of us to love mercy. So what does this mean? It means to love others by meeting their needs. It means to love others by meeting their needs. And as a representative of the African-American community, America, I'm coming to you to tell you that the only thing that African Americans need right now from you is to stop killing us. We're not even asking for a whole lot. All we're asking is to stop killing us like Doc Rivers said to us, the coach of the Los Angeles Clippers, it just doesn't seem right. And it's a hard thing when we love America 
but America doesn't love us back. Come on, somebody. The third requirement that God has for believers in response to his goodness to all of us is to walk humbly with God. What does this mean? Simply, all that means is to have a sincere, to, 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 to have a sincere, intimate relationship with God. And which always will result in a humble attitude and actions when you walk on earth. So watch this. So many say that they have a relationship with God, but it's impossible to have intimate interaction with God in relationship and fellowship and then pridefully hate others and pridefully, come on, want to be unjust towards others, it just doesn't go together. And so what God is saying that as believers, one of the requirements is that we spend time with him in fellowship, we spend time with him in prayer, we spend time with him in his word, and then we make the effort to apply those truths to our lives. And if we do that, it will produce for us a humble disposition, attitude, and actions as we deal with others in our life. Your humility is proof of your intimacy with God. If there is no humility, it's simply because there's really no intimacy. Anybody know I'm right about it? Uh, come on, somebody. These three requirements from God are how believers are to do good as we represent God on earth. Now let's put the three requirements together from back to front. We're gonna go uh, from the last one to the first one. Believers, watch this. If you have a sincere, intimate relationship with God, like you say that you do, you will walk humble and stop thinking and acting like you're superior to somebody else. Then you will love people and desire to meet their needs. Uh, we, you know, that's what Jesus did. Jesus, come on somebody, had a desire not for his own promotion, but simply to meet the needs of those that were struggling and suffering around him. And if we're going to be Christians, we need to act like Jesus. Can I get an amen? Now, when you sincerely love God and people, you will act justly in how you write execute and enforce the law so they all go together and this is the Lord's indictment against Israel then and I believe it's his indictment against America now that if we are going to be what we proclaim to be which is a Christian nation then we have to respond to God's indictment on us to act justly to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Let's look at verses 9 through 12. Starting at verse 9. Listen, the Lord is calling to the city to fear your name is wisdom. Heed the rod and the one who appointed it. Am I still to forget, watch this, your ill-gotten treasures, your wicked house, and the short ephah, which is accursed? Shall I quit someone with dishonest scales, with a bag of false weights? Your rich people, watch this, are violent, your inhabitants are liars, and their tongues speak deceitfully. The first thing uh, that I talked about this morning is the Lord's requirement. The second thing the Lord put on my heart to share with you this morning is the Lord's revelation. The Lord's revelation. This is a season for America similar to Israel back then when God is pulling the covers off of our nation's mess. Come on, somebody. We see all type of crimes that have 
been committed under the covers for years now being exposed. The abuse of women, um, um, the abuse of children, um, and now, watch this, the unjust practices against African Americans in America, our mess is being exposed. God is pulling the covers off of America's mess. And not only is he pulling the covers off of our mess, he's revealing our mess to the entire world. That's what he did in the case with Israel, and that's what he's doing in the case with America. Watch this. With the invention of the camera phone, you can't get away with anything. I don't know why we keep doing stuff. You can't get away with it. Whatever you do wrong, somebody is filming. Anybody know I'm right about it? Come on, to the old players, stay at home, because if you're out there cheating on your wife, somebody filming. I'm just saying. Whatever you do nowadays, somebody is recording. And some of y'all, y'all forget that your mic is on and you talk crazy and everybody hears it. God is pulling the covers off of America's mess. Anybody know I'm right about it? Like in this text, God will expose your mess to the entire world. In verse 9, Micah then and Pastor Holiday now is warning the nation that God is punishing you for not doing the good that he expects from you because he's been so good to you. Watch this. You, watch this America, you must respond to God's indictments with fear, reverence, and obedience to him. That's the only thing you can do. When you're indicted and, and you've been caught with your hand in the cookie jar, you have to just say, okay, Lord, you got me. And the only way to respond to God's indictment of your ungodly character is with fear, reverence for him, and obedience to him. In the text, watch this, Michael was talking to the powerful people of the nation, the, the, the power players, the, the ones that made things happen and he was saying that they had been unjust. Now, watch this. So let's look at four ways that they were unjust and unjust. And we'll find out that in America, the power players in America have been unjust in the same areas. Watch this. Watch this. The first thing they were unjust with was the law. Come on, somebody. And remember, we define what it meant to be unjust it means to not deal deal fairly with everybody in other words you get one thing for a crime and then somebody else gets another thing for a crime that's being unjust now the second thing it and the lord indicted them about was that they were unjust in their business practices come on somebody anybody know that i'm right about it he says, watch this, watch this, in verse 10, am I still to forget your ill-gotten treasure, your wicked house, your short ephah, which is a curse? Shall I acquit someone with dishonest scales with a bag of false weights? So what he is indicting them for was their illegitimate business practices. Basically what he's saying is, the, one of the reasons that you got so rich is that you've been dealing unfairly with people in regards to business. Come on, somebody. The ephah, the ephah was a, a way of measuring, and what he's saying is you had a short ephah. In other words, you were cheating as you were dealing. Come on, somebody. In other words, you were playing with loaded dice. You, 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 had, you had unfair practices, not just with your writing of the law, not just with your execution of the law and the enforcement of the law, but even with your business practices. You've been doing people wrong, and that's why you got so much money now. Come on, somebody. You got paid, but you got paid for dealing unjustly with 
people that you've been dealing with in regards to business. And what God is saying is that you might have gotten away with it. Oh, come on, somebody. Now, everybody hadn't gotten away with it. A whole lot of people are going to jail for all these scamming and schemes uh, that they have committed. Come on, somebody. But God says, even the ones that think you got away with it, you didn't get away with it. People may not have caught you, but God said, I saw the whole thing. I sit high and I look low. And he says, and you need to repent. Come on, somebody. All right, all right. He says, watch this. You were unjust with how you deal with the law. You were unjust with your business practices. And then he says, and then you were violent. You always want to hurt somebody. What's wrong with you to want to hurt somebody else? Only the devil comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. How can you proclaim to be a believer and have violent tendencies against somebody else? Come on, somebody. Anybody know that I'm right about it? You got to be careful how you act because it can impact your house and impact your culture and impact your people as a whole. You know, like, and, and, I'm, and I'm saying, like, if you gotta shoot somebody, why you can't just shoot them in the leg? Like, you know, why are you shooting with the intent to kill when he hadn't even committed a crime in the first place? Because there has to be an deep down desire for murder and for killing. And during the protest, a young Caucasian white male, come on somebody, with a rifle set out to kill some more black folk because it is now become a part of the culture. It's become something that is socially acceptable. When did it become okay for white people to kill black people? And I know that as a people, we have our own issues. We all, all races, we have our own issues. We have our own challenges, but we're not out killing nobody else. Why do y'all feel like it's okay to just kill us? And that was God's indictment of Israel then, and it's um, his indictment against America now. Watch this. The fourth thing he says that you were unjust about he says that back then, Israel were the people of prominence, the power players, they were liars, and they were always trying to deceive other people. And uh, it seems like, uh, here we go again, y'all batting a thousand on that. Can I get an amen? All four indictments are true about America's power brokers towards people who are of different races than them and it's evidence of your pride and lack of fellowship with God. Let's look at verses 13 through 16. Therefore, I have begun to destroy you, to ruin you because of your sins. You will eat but not be satisfied. Your stomach will still be empty. You will store up, but save nothing. Because what you save, I will give to the sword. You will plant, but not harvest. You will press olives, but not use the oil. You will crush the grapes, but not drink the wine. You have observed the statues of Omri and all the practices of Ahab's house. You have followed their traditions. Therefore, I will give you over to ruin and your people to derision. You will beat the scorn. You, excuse me, you will bear the scorn of the nations. The first thing that I talked about 
uh, this morning is the Lord's requirements. And then I talked about the Lord's revelation that he's pulling the covers off and revealing all of our nation's mess to the entire world. And the third uh, point I want to make on this morning and finally is the Lord's response. Micah, as God's representative, had to warn Israel then, and I believe God is sending Pastor Holiday to warn America now that there is a punishment for your disobedience to God. And God is saying is that he's sad because he expected more out of you since he's been so good to you. God has been good to you, so he expects good from you. There will be destruction and ruin because of your sins. Watch this. You will eat and not be satisfied. Come on. Uh, in other words, the, the challenge that you will have is unrest and dissatisfaction. And we see that now because of COVID-19, unrest and dissatisfaction. You will store up finances, but you won't be able to save them because COVID-19 will chop them up like a sword. Come on, somebody. I know you thought you had some money and you stored them away, but God sent the Ginsu knife of COVID-19 to chop up all your riches, and now you're watching that which you have worked hard for and saved go down the drain, and it is punishment for your disobedience. You will put in the work but things won't work out for you. You will store, you will plant, you will press, and you will crush, but you will get no results for any of your efforts. America, a self-proclaimed Christian nation, all of this is a result of you turning from following God to following worldly leaders who focus on power, fortune, and fame. And you need to understand that this is a trick of the devil. All of us need to turn back to our first love. Do not put money and power and fame over being righteous for God. Omri and Ahab were two kings that had great wealth and worldly success but were considered to be two of the worst kings ever in the northern kingdom because of their immoral practices and worship of Baal. God's people, watch this, started to be influenced by these two worldly kings and their success and lost focus. They focused more on being like the king and achieving the same kind of success that they had, and they lost focus on God's righteousness. God wants you to prioritize righteousness over riches. Now, if you go on to continue to read Micah, there is some good news at the end of this court-like indictment from God. The good news is for all of us, if we repent, which simply means to change. If you repent, God will restore. And I'm here to say, I'm not perfect, none of us are perfect. We all have changes to make, but there is no change that you can make in your own power. It's only when you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. It's only when you start prioritizing him and his righteousness. And if you don't know, God has been good to you. And not only has God been good to you, God can get good out of you. But you got to surrender your life to him like Israel did when uh, he brought them out of Egypt. He used Moses to bring them out and he produced salvation and redemption for them and transformation for them. And God can do the same thing for you. And the way that you need to respond to his indictments is with fear. And you also need to Respond to his indictment with a desire to change, repentance. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Anybody know I'm right about it? And God says, if you will repent, he will restore you back to a right relationship with him in a right place and, a right, and, a, and the right way of representing him in this world. But we all have changes to make to white America, to black America, and to all Americans, we need change 
And I'm here to tell you this morning, it's only found in surrendering our lives to Jesus Christ. Our praise team wants to come right now and give you their personal testimony of how surrendering their life to Jesus Christ has brought about a great change. God bless you. Come on, let's help. Help us sing a wonderful change. A wonderful Help us say a wonderful God bless you, and uh, we're just so thankful to God for being such a good God. He has been so good to us. Um, he created us. He takes care of us. He heals us. He transforms us. He's made such a difference in our lives. Because you were able to just take a breath is because God has been good to you. Whether you know it or not, if you are viewing with us anywhere from around the world and you were convicted by God's message on today and your response to God's indictment of your personal life is that you need to get it right with him. You need to surrender to Jesus Christ. The good thing is the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Yesterday is already gone. We can't get that back. We can't do nothing about what happened in the past. 
But the good news is we can do everything about uh, what can happen in the future. And today, and it may be your only day, uh, our lives are very, very fragile. And as we learned about the death of one of our favorite actors, um, that tomorrow is not promised to anybody. But you can get it right today, so that if we lose our physical life, you can spend eternity with God the Father. And the only way to do that is to surrender your life to his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says over in Romans 10 and 9 that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. It is a guarantee. If you put faith in Jesus Christ, it will result in your salvation. All you need to do to get it done is to be sincere with him, to talk with him, to surrender your life to him, to just give it up and let him do the rest. He'll come into your life. He'll save you. He'll, he'll transform you. He'll change the way that you think. He'll change the way that you act. He'll change the way that you see people. He'll change the way that you treat and love people. He can do it. He can make a difference in your life. The reason I know is because he did it for me. And if that is your desire, you want to get it right with the Lord, just close your eyes and bow your head right where you are. Sincerely talk to him, but you can repeat after me. Say to him, dear father, Thank you for loving me so much that you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Save me right now. And Lord, I promise to do my best to obey you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me right now. Well, God bless you. If you sincerely prayed that prayer to the Lord, we want to welcome you to the family of God. Come on, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much. It takes a real man or a real woman to surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. And, and we're so grateful that you did that. Uh, we want to invite you to become a member of the Key Church. And uh, you can do that. We ask that you just go on to our website and then you can look for I Am New. And then under that, you can click the link, get connected, send us a memo saying, I surrender my life to Jesus Christ. There's nothing that's going to make us more happy to see a note from you saying, I surrender my life to Jesus Christ. Uh, you can write in your note, uh, will you have somebody call me and talk to me about my salvation? Or you can write in your note, I want to join the Key Church, and uh, we're glad to have you. Come on, y'all, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much for all of you inviting us into your home and allowing us to be a blessing. Uh, to you on this week. Remember that this is our last week of pre-recording and on next Sunday, Milestone, uh, we will be recording live with an on-campus service from our new church home. Come on, y'all, let's give God a hand, clap of praise. Hallelujah. We're excited about that. And then on the 13th, we'll be celebrating Pastor Holiday and First Lady Holiday's uh, pastoral anniversary with the great preaching giant, uh, the great Pastor Dwight McKissick from Cornerstone Church in Arlington is going to come. My father and my new father in the ministry, and I'm, I'm thankful to have him. And then on the 20th, where you're white, and uh, we're going to come and we're going to celebrate our eighth year as a church. God has brought us a mighty long way in eight years. If you want to support what the Lord is doing here at the Key Church, we ask that you download an app called Giveify, and then look for the Key Church. You'll see my picture. Put your debit card information into that secure account. And once you do it, it's set, giving becomes very, very convenient. If you don't feel comfortable with giving online, you can mail your offering in to the Key Church, P.O. Box 50793, Fort Worth, Texas, 76105. God is good all of the time. Put your faith in Jesus Christ and he will transform your life. It's a guarantee. I know it because he did it for me. God bless you. Thank you again for welcoming us into your home.